Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this tutorial on creating data pipes in C. So a data pipe is basically a way that we can allow different processes on our machine to communicate with one another, typically in a way that involves making the output of one program the input of another program. Say for example you have one program that will go out on the internet and collect some data, and then you have a second program that will take that data and analyze it in some way and provide some output. Well, you could create a pipe between these two processes to do them all at once so that it will go out to the internet, collect the data, and feed that input directly into the second program, which will then analyze it and give you the output. So that's what a pipe is. And there are actually many ways to create pipes in C. And we're going to talk about two of them today. This one is going to be the easiest, and we are basically going to open it or the, we're going to open the second process basically the way we would open a file. So we'll create a file pointer and we'll call it pipe. And we're just going to set it open to this function, popen. And that's a lot similar to the f open for file open, but this is process open. It takes very similar arguments too. So it'll take the path to the file we want. And we can do this either as a dot slash with a relative path to tell it to execute this program, or we can specify the full path of the program we want to execute. And I'm actually in the wrong file here, so let's <laughs> switch the file to the correct one. So this is the one that is going to be opening the second process. So the pipe from is the one that we are going to activate, and basically we are going to feed data into pipe two. And what pipe2 is going to do is basically a simple hello world program. So we can create a character buffer of 256 characters. We can use f get s to get a string from input and we'll put it in buffer. We'll take 256 characters and we'll take it from the standard input, so your keyboard. And then all we're going to do is print that string. So we will print it and we will say send s backslash n for a new line, and then we will print the buffer. And then in our pipe from application, we will open the pipe to. So I can say file pointer pipe equals popen. And now I'm going to use a relative path, so I'll say dot slash two, because that's what I'm going to compile this as. And then I'm going to specify that I want to open it in write mode. Now, if I want to use the full path, I would do something like this, slash users, slash Eric, slash et cetera, et cetera, until I get to the executable that I actually want to use. But I'm going to use a relative path here. So I need to just put dot slash to tell it to actually execute this program. Okay. So we are going to open this program, and then we can just write to it the same way we would write to a regular file. So we can say character pointer hello equals hello world. And then we can f write that pointer of size one byte. And we're going to write how many of those one bytes. We are going to write the string length of our hello message plus one for that null terminal character. We need to include that. So we need to have plus one on the string length. And we are going to write that to our pipe. And then we need to make sure that we use p close at the end. It's very important that we do p close, otherwise this program will never terminate. So you'll enter an infinite loop unless you actually call p close. So make sure you call p close. And then we can return zero for a successful run and we will do the same here zero and then we can compile and execute now i would usually compile in xcode but i'm doing this in a slightly different way than usual so i'm going to use gcc or gnu c compiler and you got a little sneak peek at obs there as i was recording sorry about that very unprofessional of me anyway we'll say gcc sketch for the folder and then slash pipe 2.c and we'll output that as two, and then we will do the same thing for the from file. And then we can just execute from, and it will print hello world. So what happens? In our from application, we create a file pointer to this executable in write mode. We have to open it in write mode. 
And then we are going to actually write this string to that file. And in doing so, we activate this executable. So it's going to get this from the standard input. It is kind of just waiting for something in standard input until we write, and then it will print that to the screen. We come back to here. Once we have written it, we can close the pipe and we return zero. It's a very simple program, but it's not the most robust way of creating pipes. So this is a one-way street. We have one way of sending data. We can send data from this executable to this executable. And in many circumstances, that's all we really need. But oftentimes we need two-way communications or more robust pipes, more permanent pipes. And we would do something with what is called a named pipe here. And we can actually create named pipes using C. But in my preparation for this video, I noticed that there were some strange things that would happen when you did that and you needed to include a lot of other libraries. So I'm going to do it a more manual way that will be a little less prone to errors and should be kind of universally usable. Now there, again, are ways to do this programmatically, so you are welcome to look into those and use them, but I wanna keep this a little bit stripped down so you can see exactly what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is actually create a third file on my system, and it's not really a file. Well, it kind of is a file. <laughs> so in uh, Unix-based systems such as Mac OS and Linux, pretty much everything is a file or a process. And so we're going to create a kind of file, a specialty file, a pipe. And I can do that from my terminal. So here I want to say MKFIFO. So make first in, first out. That is what a pipe is. It is a first in, first out data structure. So whatever I put in first will be read first. Okay, so I'm going to make it and I'm going to call it pipe. And that just creates this additional file right here. It has no size to it. There's nothing stored in it. It's just a kind of empty stasis file. And we can put things in there. And as soon as we take them out, it will become empty. So as we add things in and read them out, this thing will remain at a pretty consistent size. So let's see how we actually will use this in the code. So let's start with our pipe from application. Well, actually, instead, let's go to our pipe to application. So Instead of getting this from standard in, what we are going to do is include two libraries and read it from the pipe. So I'm going to include the uni standard, and I'm also going to include fcntl.h. I actually don't know what that stands for, so if you do, please let me know in the comments. But these are going to give us access to two functions. First is going to be open. So we are going to create an integer variable called pipe. Now this one's an integer, and the integer is typically in most tutorials called FD for file descriptor, because the function I'm about to call is going to return an integer that will point to a file. We don't really need to know the details there. We just need to know that it's stored in an integer. Okay, so we're going to create an integer called pipe, and we are going to call this function open. And we are going to just open a file called pipe, that file that I just created. And we are going to pass in a second argument. And there are a lot of parameters that we can pass in here. So we can see O, R, D, W, R, alert, async, create, all of these different things that we can do. And that's one of the ways that we would start creating these files programmatically. For now, we're just going to use R, D, W, R for read, write. So we can read from this pipe and we can write to it. Okay. So now we actually have to read from it. So we are going to just call the function read. We pass it the file descriptor, pipe. We want to store the results from this read in buffer, and we can accept a maximum of 256 bytes. And then we can simply print that to the buffer. But what we want to do, or sorry, we can print that to the screen. But then afterwards, we want to close our pipe. And again, we need to make sure that we close our pipes when we are done using them. So this is going to read the contents of the pipe into the buffer and print it to the screen and then close the pipe. Now, before we can do that, we need to actually write something to the pipe. So let's get rid of all of this. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to include those two libraries. 
uni standard and fcntl. And then I can open those same pipes. So int pipe equals open pipe. And we are also going to read this or open this in read write mode. Now we want to actually write something to the pipe with this one. This is going to be the one that sends the input to the second program. So we are going to create a character pointer called hello. We'll set it equal to hello world. And then we are going to write to our pipe the hello message, string length of that message, plus one for that null terminal character. Now, in the previous example, we were able to just execute this program here because simply the act of opening the pipe was also executing the executable. But here that's not the case. Opening and writing to this pipe doesn't necessarily do anything to the to executable. So we need to do that manually. Fortunately, that's going to be easy to do because we can do it in exactly the same way that we just did. We are going to create a process file pointer, also called also used popen, and we are going to open dot slash to, to just tell it to execute. We will open it in write mode, and then we are simply going to close it. So p close process, open and close, simple. Once we open it, then this will execute, it will read from the pipe, and then it will close the pipe after printing to the screen, of course. And now we can close the pipe on this end, and we should be good to go. If we compile and then we get our message. So now the pipe is permanent. And if we do another list, we can see that the size of the pipe is still zero. So once we have read the message out of the pipe, the pipe becomes empty. And so it will remain at this constant size. Now, this is pretty good, but still we are only doing one-way communications. So let's finish this off by setting up a return so that the to executable can actually write to the pipe as well, and the from executable can get the data back. Also, before we go any further, let me point out that here I am using characters and I'm using strings to pass between them. But as with everything in C, these are all just raw bytes, so I can send anything I want to to the from application, so long as it knows how to collect it. I could define my own structures, my own data structures, my own data types, and I can send them to the to application, so long as the to application knows how to handle them when it gets there. So if it has the same structs defined, it can just pass those raw bytes as the struct, and we can send anything we want to through the pipe. But I'm just using these strings to demonstrate. So I just wanna make clear that you don't have to do this with strings. Now, once we get our to message, we read it, and instead of printing it here, let's instead write it something back to the pipe. So we can create another character pointer called reply, and we'll set it equal to hello yourself. Quite rude. And then we can <laughs> write to the pipe again. We're going to put in reply, and then uh, string length, plus one for that null terminal. We then close the pipe and we should be good to go over here. But once we get to the from application, after we have launched the to application, we can now read something from the pipe again. So we can create a character buffer, 256 characters, that number is arbitrary. And then we can read from the pipe into buffer up to 256 bytes. And now we can print f the buffer and recompile and we have created the most inefficient hello world algorithm ever. So this one, the from application, is going to open this named pipe, this third file that is existing on the system. It is going to write hello world to that file, and then it is going to open up the to application. 
when it opens the to application, we are going to create a character buffer and read what is currently in the pipe into that buffer. We then create a reply, write it back to the pipe, close the pipe, which brings us back to our from application, which will now read in what was written to the pipe and print it to the screen. So we run the from application and it says, hello yourself. And we can just, one more thing here, actually go ahead and put in the message that is sent. So one more compile. One more execution, and there we go. We have everything working in the pipe. We are sending data from the from application, receiving it in the to application, and then sending something back to the from application. So this has created a clean data pipeline for us to send information between processes. So I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you next time. By the way, all the source code is available on GitHub, so follow me there and you can download all the source code to see how all this works. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Toodaloo.